are the objectives for the entire unit. Heat versus temperature. Temperature reflects the random motions of particles in a substance. The more motion, the higher the temperature. While heat is the transfer of energy between two objects due to a temperature difference, heat will flow from a hot body to a cool body. So it always goes from higher temperature to lower temperature until they're equal. There's two ways to transfer energy, work, which is force times distance, and heat. We're only going to be concerned with heat in this unit, though. Our units for heat are calories. You may have seen calories on food labels, but the food calorie is a capital C calorie, which is a thousand little c calories, which is also one kilo calorie. Make sure that you pay attention to if it has a capital C or a lowercase c for calories. Joules is our main unit for heat, and that's abbreviated with a capital J. You should know the conversion between calories and joules, and that to one calorie is 4.184 joules. So if we wanted to convert 53.8 calories to joules, we first set up a chart like we've done all year. Whatever unit you start with is going to go in the bottom right, and the unit we're converting to is on top. We plug in our conversion, one calorie is 4.184 joules. Since they're on top, we're going to multiply, and we should put our answer in three sig figs. make sure that you get 225 joules. I'm going to pause the video and try the next one on your own. So again, this one we want four sig figs. So rounded to four sig figs. That's the answer you should have gotten. Go ahead and solve the next two on your own. Restart when you have your answer. In this case, since we put joules on bottom, we're going to divide, and we want three sig figs. In this last problem, we want kilo joules. But we don't have a conversion for kilojoules, but we do have one for joules. So first, you have to convert to joules. And then you can do joules to kilojoules. A kilo of anything is a thousand. We want five significant figures. giving us 107.01 kilojoules. Specific heat capacity is represented by a capital C peak. Specific heat capacity is the energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance, one degree Celsius. So how much energy is going to be needed to raise the temperature one degree? for one gram of a substance. The units for specific heat are joules per gram degree Celsius or calories per gram degree Celsius. The higher the specific heat capacity, the more energy it would take to change a substance's temperature. Water has a relatively high specific heat of 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. 
If we convert that to calories, because there's 4.184 joules in one calorie, it's one calorie per gram degree Celsius. Make sure that you have your specific heat of waters memorized. Using specific heat, we can calculate the mass, the change in temperature, or the heat gained or lost using this equation here. Q is the heat that's gained or lost, and heat is going to be either in joules or calories. Your M is your mass, and mass needs to be in grams. Delta T is the change in temperature, which is going to be in degrees Celsius. You're going to do the final temperature minus the initial temperature to get your change in temperature. And finally, CP is your specific heat capacity. Remember, it has the three units of calories per gram degree Celsius or joules per gram degree Celsius. So in this problem, they say how much heat. So we're looking for Q is required to raise the temperature of 530 grams. That's our mass from 47.3 to 60.7. So delta T is final minus initial or 13.4 degrees Celsius. So write your equation. We're solving for Q, so we don't need to rearrange our equation. We can just plug everything in. So first, our mass. Our change in temperature. And then our CP. Since it didn't specify what they wanted their heat in, joules or calories, you could have used either of water specific heats. Make sure though that you are canceling your units. And so I'm left with joules. Multiplying that all out, you get this, but we want two significant figures since that's our least number. So 3.0 times 10 to the fourth. On the second problem, we're calculating the mass. We have temperatures, so we need to calculate our change in temperature. And they gave us 25,000 joules, which is our Q. So we're looking for mass. So rearranging our equation, we have to divide by delta T CP. And now we can plug things in. So we plug in our heat. our change in temperature, and our CP. Because it's joules, we have to use the joule one, which is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Just like we've done in other units, the number goes with joules. Cancel out our units, joules cancel out, degrees Celsius cancel out, and we're left with grams. We're going to divide and divide again. Make sure that you get this in the calculator. Looking back at our problem, we should have two significant figures. So this rounded to two significant figures. It is 3.0 times 10 to the second grams.
Go ahead and pause the video and solve this one on your own. Restart when you have the answer. So we have mass, we have energy, and we have the CP. And we're trying to calculate the change in temperature. So solving for change in temperature, we need to divide by MCP. And so now we can plug in. We have our heat. Our mass. And our CP should go on bottom. And so now when we cancel out, our grams cancel out, up, our units of energy are not canceling out because one's in calories and one's in joules. So we have to convert one of them. So if I convert my calories to joules, one calorie is 4.184 joules. Now my calories cancel, my joules cancel, and I'm left with degrees Celsius, which is what I need my answer in. So make sure that you are writing your units, canceling out your units, so you can catch those kind of tricks. In the calculator, you get this. But looking back, we should have two significant figures, which means this rounds to 310 degrees Celsius is our change in temperature. Go ahead and pause the video and solve this one. Restart when you have your answer. We have mass. We have energy. We have information to find our delta T. On this one, the temperature decrease. If you're not solving for temperature, you can just do bigger minus smaller um, because otherwise we'd have to put a negative in front of the Q. So although this one, if we did final minus initial, it would give us a negative, just make it where it's going to be positive. We are solving for the specific heat, so we need to divide by M delta T. So now we can plug in. We know our Q. We know our mass. And we know our change in temperature. You notice nothing cancels out because our units for specific heat should have three units, joules over grams degrees Celsius. In the calculator, you get 7.345. But looking back, we need two significant figures, so 7.3. All right, last one. This one's a little bit trickier because we're looking for temperature. So if you want to pause it and try it on your own, or you can follow along. So we're looking for the initial temperature. We know the mass. We know a specific heat, and we know Q. And since we're looking for initial temperature, I would recommend not rearranging this equation and leaving it as it's written. So our Q, we're going to put 83.8 calories equals, and then our mass, Our change in temperature, we said, is final minus initial, so 134 minus TI. And our CP is 0 0.380 joules per gram degree Celsius. Notice, though, that our unit for energy 
and our specific heat energy do not match. So we will need to convert one of those. I'm going to convert over here. And for every one calorie, there's 4.184 joules. So then my calories cancel out and I'm left with joules, which will cancel on the other side. 83.8 times 4.184 gives me 350.6. And on the other side, I need to distribute. So it's 54.9 times 134 times 0 0.380. And then we do the same thing, 54.9 times TI times 0 0.580 gives me negative 20.862 TI. Combine like terms. And then isolate the variable. So my initial temperature is 117 degrees Celsius. So if you're solving for initial or final temperature, you do not need to rearrange Make sure, though, that you're distributing out like we did here. 